What's up everyone, my name is Alpha and today we're back with another Pokemon Challenge video. Today we're back on Pokemon Alpha Sapphire and I really wanted to make it difficult as smart as I could. Today we're going to try to beat Pokemon Alpha Sapphire using only trash shiny Pokemon. So what considers a trash Pokemon? So I've in the past, I tried to make it 460. No, I want to push it to the absolute limit. 400 base stat total is the limit for a trash Pokemon. So the rules on screen right now, I have to catch one Pokemon per route and they have to be shiny and they actually have to be a trash Pokemon. Now they have to be under 400. They can't have 400 at all. So every Pokemon I show on screen will have maximum 399 or less base stat total. So all the good Pokemon are above this. As you can see, Kadabra and all things like that. Everything below this is honestly trash. Wellmere is the cutoff. We're going to try to beat Alpha Sapphire using a really interesting rule set of trash Pokemon. And on top of that, if my Pokemon ever faints, they are dead. So I can't use them ever again. So that's going to make it even more difficult. It's a level cap. So the level cap is going to be the highest level in each gym leader's team. Even make it more difficult. And on top of that, you can't use items inside of battle, and you must play on set mode, which is always great. And also included with that, each of my poem will be nicknamed after you guys in the comments. So thanks so much for leaving a comment in my previous challenge video. If you guys want to be nicknamed after future poem, just drop in the comments and hopefully I pick yours. And while I was down there, please don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to my channel. It means a lot to me. Anyways, let's get into the challenge video itself. So to begin off, you'd be surprised. I actually wanted a starter Pokemon. Now, technically, I didn't have to. I could have kept this alone, but I think Mudkip would be a pretty good addition to my team. So, I'm going to start shiny hunting Mudkip as my very first Pokemon. Eventually, we do get a shiny Mudkip, which is really good. Now, unfortunately, while I was checking and leveling up my Mudkip, I actually found out that it's a Route 101 encounter, so we can't get any Pokemon from Route 101 ever again. So, we have to wait a little bit, but uh, we actually head into Route 103. East of Petalbrook City, we're able to go shiny hunting out here and get ourselves a shiny warm pole as well so we got two shiny pokemon now i don't want to evolve my mudkip because marshdom has what 405 base that total so we can't evolve my mudkip but we could catch the warm pole here add it to my team and then evolve it to the maximum level so i actually get a silicone out of this so that means we get a beautify and as you can see on screen beautify way under 400 base that total so that means it's considered a trash pokemon for this rule set so it's going to be really nice for us. As from there, we can make our way into Rustboro City. And Mudkip's doing Mudkip's thing is really good in the early game. As from there, we can face off against Roxanne next, the first gym leader in the game. We're set the battle off against her using my Mudkip, obviously. Now Mudkip's able to go for a water gun and then two shot into the Geodude. Pretty easy stuff, you know, things how it goes. From there, she's her next moment is going to be a nose pass. I two shot into this thing as well. No potions left over as we beat down Roxanne pretty easily. From there, we're going to head into Vernon Tip Tunnel, which is going to have one new Pokemon for us, which is going to be Wismer. Now, Wismer surprisingly has an evolution that has under 400 base stat total. So, we're going to start shiny hunting out here until we get ourselves a shiny Wismer, which added to my team. Really close, you know, is using a lot of damage with Echo Voice, but eventually we caught it. And, uh, yeah, that could have gotten really bad for us. Uh, from there, we can make our way into Deerford Island after that and face up against Brawly. Nothing much in between. As from there, we start the battle off against Brawly using my Beautify. We can gust into the Machop and one-shot it, which I'm surprised by. From there, I can gust into the Makita and also one-shot it as we beat down Brawly and then secure our second gym badge. From there, we jump up and we can actually evolve our Whisper into a Loudred. And now that stops this evolution line. Loudred is the final evolution we can really get. <laughs> we can't get Exploit, obviously. But Lotre does a lot of damage. We put the Soul Scarf onto him and then so we just destroy May's team with Echo Voice. As you see, just one shot everything. Echo Voice is a pretty underrated move. I really like it. We also get Power Punch from the Pokemon in uh, in Marvel City before we face off against the next gym. And then speaking about the next gym, we're gonna face off against Watson next. We're gonna start the battle off against Watson using my Lotre, obviously. Now I put a Cherry Berry on Lotre and then Power Punch into the Magnemite. Great outplay, I always do this, and then we can knock out the Magnemite afterwards and then get plus two with my attack stat. It goes out to his Voltorb next, and I'm able to just survive the Volt Switch. Voltos into the Magneton, and then knock him out, and then knock out the Voltorb as well. So we end up beating down Watson, getting ourselves the third gym badge in the game very easily. As from there, we can move on and start rock smashing these rocks. There's a lot of purpose for this, actually. Geodude and also its evolution, Grappler, is actually Pokemon under 400 base that total. So this is the only way to really guarantee that and not miss out on the counter. I decided to get myself a shiny Geodude after this, and also we get a bunch of hard scales for us. So we got a bunch of money, we got a bunch of hard scales. I mean, pretty good deal. We get us a shiny Geodude eventually, a golden Geodude. We used to get this a lot too when I was just playing on my GBA back in the day, but from there, we can catch myself a Geodude and then go out into Route 114, which is going to be in the ashy area. We can't get Skarmory. Uh, we can get Sandshrew or Spinda out here, and we actually prefer getting Spinda, surprisingly. So eventually, we get ourselves the most common Pokemon possible. We get ourselves a Spinda out here. 
catch it, add it to my team, which is going to be really nice. And from there, you can move on into Meteor Falls, which isn't too difficult. We also face off against Archer later on. And then we can make our way into Lava Ridge Town and face off against Flannery next. We're going to start the battle off against Flannery using my Graveler, even though it says Geodude on the right. I'm using my Graveler. Graveler is able to go for a Magnitude against the Slugma to one-shot it. Magnitude into the Numa to one-shot it. And then her final opponent will be a Torkoal, which I Magnitude 9 and one-shot it with a crit. So we one-shot everything on Flannery's team. And the gym fights seem to be pretty easy. But these are where the Pokemon should be. You know, they're really good Pokemon. This is a little later on in the game, but from there after that, we're not going to teleport back to Petalburg City. We're going to actually stay here and head into the desert, and then we can start actually hunting out here in the desert for another Pokemon. We want a Cacnea or a Trap Pinch. Trap Pinch is actually more favorable because it actually could learn Fly, but if we don't get a Trap Pinch, we go look for a Taylor or something. But lucky enough, we get ourselves a Shiny Trap Pinch, which I will we'll take that. We're going to use my Beautify to Sunsport and then capture it with a Pokeball. From there, we catch ourselves a Trap Pinch and we can move back into Petalburg City. We're going to face off against Norman next. We start the battle off against Norman using my Loudred. Now, Loudred, maybe not the greatest play. I go out to my Beautify, get yawned at, not the greatest. I stun Sport into him at least and then go out to my Loudred. Uh, from there, I could, from there, I could. From there, Loudred could power punch into the slacking, but unfortunately, it gets put to sleep. Lucky enough, it actually doesn't get hurt while it's asleep, so I'm able to power punch more against him. I eventually, boost myself up where I almost one shot the slacking at full HP. I eventually, knock out Norman slacking, and then his next moment was gonna be a big rock. He's gonna chip me down with a retaliate, kinda scared me, so I power punch and knock him out in one shot. His final poem will be his own ace slacking, which is gonna outspeed me and retaliate me. Uh, looking up, I go out to my graveler, and looking up, it wasn't retaliate, it was just chip away. So from there, I could just bulldoze and then magnitude into him. Eventually, knock out the slacking as we beat down Norman and get ourselves surf afterwards. Now we have access to surf, we actually go into the weather fortress, and my go to to knock out Sharpedo is actually beautify so that's kind of embarrassing but you know what that is what we have to do from there we can move on into fortress city and face off against the next gym leader in the game we're gonna face off against winona next winona is gonna be a flying type gym leader and we're gonna start the battle off against her using my graveler graveler is able to go for a rock blast and uh, yeah land it knock out the swallow for us as from there her next poem is gonna be a power print it's kind of scary so i got into my spinda Spinner's able to go for a dizzy punch and then power punch up against it. It gets really annoying here. Uh, eventually, I put him to sleep, power punch, and then dizzy punch into him. <laughs> eventually, knock out the Pelipper. From there, her next poem is going to be an Otario, which I go for a hypnosis into him as well. Go to my Graveler next, which will go for a Rock Blast against him. Uh, it goes for a Con Guard, which is kind of annoying, and then goes for an Earthquake. Earthquake was a crit, so I'm able to survive pretty easily. And then Rock Blast again to knock out the Ataria. As her final poem will be a Skarmory. I kind of wanted to stay in. I did stay in, actually, and, and take a Steel Wing, which is annoying. So I decided to go out to my Vibrava, take a Steel Wing decently, I guess. I, I'm looking for a Dragon Breath Paralyzed. I get it on my second attempt. Well, unfortunately, my Vibrava go down to low HP. Go out to my Loudred once again. Loudred's able to Power Punch into him. Eventually knock him out with a few more power punches as you can see and we chipped down a skarmy eventually knocking out uh winona and getting ourselves the sixth gym badge in the game now we have access into a lot of other things we actually just face off against team aqua a lot of times we use my graveler with sturdy now which just destroys sharpedo somehow uh we don't want my loudra to evolve as from there we make our way into mosley city afterwards and we face off against Taylor and liza next now we're gonna start the battle off against Taylor and liza using my loudra and also vibrava we're gonna go for bite and crunch against the lunatone and then knock out the lunatone as the solar rock sets up sun and does zero damage with the solar beam as eventually we just knock them out in two turns as we beat down Tate and Liza. Now no one learns to call mine against from there, we can move on and face off against Archie at the bottom of, at the Sea Cavern or something like that. We beat down most of his team, and again, Graveler is a great Sharp Peter counter. As we face off against Primal Kyogre afterwards, we actually take a detour. We go out to the, the dive routes. I, I don't know which route, but we start shiny hunting out here, and there's a really good reason why. We start shiny hunting out here for a Clam Pearl. We're going to get the Clam Pearl, and we're going to add it to my team as my backup, because Mudkip has only been using HMs. I have no use for it at all. So we need a better water type. We're going to use that afterwards. As from there, we're going to face off against Primal Kyogre next. We're going to use my Graveler since it has uh, Sturdy as an ability. I could take any move. Besides an Ice Beam Freeze, that would have been the worst case. But it doesn't even go for that as it goes for an Aqua Ring. And then I could go for an Earthquake. And then two shot into him with Soft Sand Earthquake. As we take an Ice Beam and then knock him out with an Earthquake. We beat down Primal Kyogre. So from there, we can move on and face off against Wallace next. We start the battle off against Wallace using my Beautify. Against the Love This and always... We go for a setup move, and then it always goes for a tract, and then sweet kiss. Mention we only get one quiver dance up, by the way, and then from there we could giga drain into him and knock out the love this and get my HP back up. 
From there, I could Giga Drain into the Maltic as well, take the Ice Beam, lug it over in the freeze, and I'm able to knock him out with second Giga Drain, and the battle should be over after that. From there, his next bone is going to be a Celio. I one shot it with my Giga Drain. I knock out a Wish Catch in one shot as well. I took more time not trying to learn Boom Burst as I knock out the Sea King, and we beat down Wallace and Garrus as the 8th gym batch in the game. So from there, we can make our way into Victory Road and phase out against Wally next. Beautify is my go to with Quiver Dance as we're able to knock out the rest of his team pretty easily with this. Even get my HP back out with Giga Dream, we're able to knock out the Glade at the end and beat down Wally, make our way into the Leaf. Which we can start our Elite Four challenge using my Beautifly against Sydney. Sydney's a dark type Elite Four member. We're gonna start the battle off against him using my Beautifly. Against his Mighty Anna, we're gonna go for a Bug Buzz immediately and one shot him. No time for setup. As his next moment will be an Absol, I outspeed him as well and knock out the Absol. As from there, his next moment is gonna be a Shift Tree. He goes for Fake Out, but I have Shield Dust. Oh, I don't have Shield Dust. I thought I have Shield Dust. But I go for Bug Buzz and knock out the Shift Tree to one shot him. As his next moment will be a Sharpedo. He outspeeds me, crunches me. Kind of annoying, but I Bug Buzz and one shot him as well. And then his final Pokemon is going to be a Cacturn. Bug Buzz, one shot him. You know, four times a week to everything, basically. We beat down Sydney, and we can move on and face off against the next Elite Four member. We're going to face off against Phoebe next. We're going to start the battle off against Phoebe using my Vibrava against her Dusclops. We're going to go for a Crunch against her as she goes for a Curse and knocks herself out. From there, her next bone is going to be a Dusnar, which is kind of annoying. So I go out to my Graveler next. Graveler is able to chip down a little bit with Rock Blast. I don't know why I like Rock Blast so much, but it can't be that great. As from there, I'm unable to knock out the Dusnar with a second Rock Blast, even though Earthquake with Saw Sen is actually way stronger than Rock Blast. I don't know why I keep using Rock Blast. From there, I go for an Earthquake after she heals up. I'm able to two-shot into him to knock him out. As from there, her next bone will be a save light. Oh, I didn't even mention, I put Clamper on my team, and I'm able to just chip down a save light, eventually knock him out, which is really nice. From there, her next bone is going to be a Bayonet, which I go out and see my Spinda. I'm able to go for a few Suck Punch, eventually knock out the Bayonet. Leave my Spinda at 1 HP, which is kind of annoying, so I go out to my Vibrower once again to Crunch, and knock out the Bayonet in one shot as we beat down Phoebe. Next up, we're going to phase out against Glacier next. We're going to start the battle off against Glacier using my Spinda. We're going to go for Hypnosis off against the Glalie. Which, I don't know if it's the greatest play, but you know what? It works out. I power punch into the Glalie, and then from there, I go for a rest. I don't know what kind of set I'm running, but I was thinking too creatively. As from there, I put the Glalie to sleep, put myself to sleep at rest, and then from there, I could just keep going for power punches. I basically knock out the Glalie, force out the force out the Frost Ass, which is really nice. I go for a Sucker Punch and knock out the Frost Ass. Force out the second Frost Ass and a Sucker Punch as well to knock out the Frost Ass. Her next bone is going to be a Wall Ring, which I was expecting to survive the Blizzard. I was really wrong. I went for Power Punch. Blizzard comes in, knocks me out. I'm like, oh, wow, that's how I lose my Pokemon because I'm an idiot. Anyways, from there, I go out to my Graveler with Sturdy. I have a lot more leeway with Graveler because it could survive any move, and I'm able to go for Rock Blast. And then from there, Rock Blast is able to two shut the Wall Ring, as her next Pokemon and final Pokemon will be a Glalie. I go out and see my Loudred. Loudred is able to do some chip damage, eventually, knock out the final Glalie for us as we beat down Glacia and lose our first Pokemon of the run. Which is okay, as uh, as long as we beat the rest of the run. We move on and face out against Drake next. We're gonna start the battle off against Drake using my Clam Pearl. Now Clam Pearl, all I gotta do is go for Shell Smash and outspeed everything, and we should be fine. As we do, Shell Smash up and then Ice Boom to knock out the Altario. His next one's gonna be a Flygon, outspeed of Ice Boom to knock him out, Ice Boom to knock out the Salamence, and an Ice Boom to knock out the final Flygon. Unfortunately, I was pretty scared that I can't one-shot the Kingdra in the back, so I decided to switch out my Pokemon. I switch out to my Loudred. Found out that I can't really take too much damage. I go for Bodos, and then from there, my Loudre is at 1 HP. So I decided to switch out into my Beautify. Beautify, I don't know why I went for Quiver Dance here. I thought I could survive an Ice Beam or something. Must have not gone well, so uh, my Beautify went down. I go out to my Graveler. Graveler is uh, lucky enough is able to outspeed him and went for Rock Blast once again. I don't know why. From there, I, I was scared as a speed tie, so I went for Bodos once again against the Kingdra. Went for Earthquake and knock out the Kingdra as we beat down Drake and lose another Pokemon, which is really bad for us because Steven Stone's giving me a really hard fight. Anyways, we can start the battle off against Steven Stone using my Loudred. I taught Loudred Fire Blast because I know how this goes. If I set up against Skarmory, the Aggrons can come out and destroy my team, so I gotta knock out the Skarmory as fast as I can. And then Laundry does pretty good damage against him with Fire Blast, so we're able to two shot into the Skarmory with Fire Blast. His next one's gonna be an Aggron, which I expected, fully expected. Power Punch into him to break his sturdy, and then from there I could Bodos into him, but unfortunately, he goes for an Iron Tail and one shots me with a crit, so it's really annoying. And I'm like, what do I do here? I go out to my Vibrava. Vibrava is able to go for an Earthquake, chip down the Aggron back to the sturdy. And then Fortune gets switched on onto the Claydol with Levitate. And then it activates both screens. I'm like, I can't sweep them with Clan Pearl 
with the screens up, so I go for Fly to waste some turns. Lucky enough, it wastes two turns for us. So from there, the Reflect actually wears off, and it actually goes for extra sensory. I go for a Crunch to knock out the Clay Doll, which is really nice. From there, his next opponent's gonna be the Aggron once again. He goes for Forward Star once again, which is fine. I go for a Crunch to break his 30 and then an Earthquake to knock him out. His next opponent's gonna be an Art Model, which I go for Rock Slide and flinch them on accident, but uh, I'll take that. As from there, he's gonna knock me out with an X Sister. Go out to my Clan Pro next, which will go for a Shell Smash, and then take an X Sister just barely, as I'm able to go for a Scald and knock out the Art Model, and also Ice Beam to knock out the Cradle Lee. And then from there, for some reason, it didn't go for Bullet Punch, and I actually outspeed the Mega Metagross. So I went for Scald, and then destroyed the Mega Metagross. So we end up being down Steven Stone pretty easily at the end. We lose two more Pokemon, so we ended the entire run with four deaths. And uh, yeah, Clan Pro, pretty good. <laughs> yeah. Uh, anyways, that'll be it for me today. Thank you so much for watching. If you guys all enjoyed this video, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to my channel. It means a lot to me. Anyways, my name is Alpha, and I hope you guys all have a great day. And I'm out. Peace.